Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trucking Tower Podcast and this edition of Expert Insights. We're going to be talking about patents today. And I'm excited to be joined by J.D. Hoovener. How are you doing, J.D.? I'm doing well. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. You know, thanks for coming on with me. I really want to say, first of all, thank you for sending that congratulations kit to us for our patent pending status on our Fleet Compete business intelligence software. That was really cool to get in the mail. Good. I'm glad you got it. Yeah, we love sending that out. It's, it's a celebration where you get patent pending, you know, you finally get a breathe, right? Uh, other inventors out there have missed out. You're the first one to file. So yeah, congrats to you and, and your team, Andy. <laughs> Yeah, that was really fun. And I got the magnet and I uh, took a picture of it and did some posts on that. Um, you know, just to start us off, where were you? What happened? Who were you surrounded with that made you decide to get into this line of work in patents? Well, it, it was sort of, a, you know, kind of a winding path in a lot of things. Um, you know, I started my career actually as an engineer. I graduated from the University of Washington and uh, with an industrial and systems engineering degree. Worked for Boeing as an engineer uh, on the 787 for about 10 years. Um, excellent, you know, kind of career, but sort of felt limited, kind of felt lost in the big company and uh, had an itch to own my own company someday. Sort of had that entrepreneurial bug you know, somewhere inside of me. Probably my parents, you know, they're, they're both kind of independent uh, sales folks. Uh, my father is a car sales, my mom's a realtor. And uh, anyway, so Boeing was kind enough to put me to school. They put me through an MBA curriculum and um, at the sort of the capstone of that, that was a business plan competition. And uh, I submitted the only ever plan to open up a law firm. <laughs> they just laughed. I was excited, right, at the fact of being able to potentially open up a law firm. At that yeah. time, the Shark Tank had just started taking off. And I was just in, I was enthralled, right, with, oh, my gosh, people are raising money. One of the first questions they ask about is, do you have IP? Do you have patents on what you've, what you've developed on this product? And I was like, what does it take to be a patent attorney? And, you know, sure enough, you have to have an engineering or science degree. And you just have to go to law school. So, um, okay, <laughs> let's go to law school. So I, I sort of made that plan um, back in 2012, went to law school, passed what's called the patent bar, or to be a patent attorney, you have to pass a separate bar on top of the, the state bar to be able to represent inventors before the patent office. And so I passed that and became a patent agent, it's called, during law school, sort of confirmed that's what I wanted to do. I mean, loved it. I mean, really started working with uh, inventors, helping them bring their products forward and uh, graduated and opened up the practice right away. That's awesome. So uh, I didn't realize we both have an industrial engineering degree. <laughs> so uh, nice. yes. Right. Um, and I had a, in my early career, I traveled all over the world, setting up warehouses and kidding lines, shipping lines. And uh, that was a lot of fun before I was cool. married and settled down basically. Yep. <laughs> so um, what, you know, in this whole patent world, what are some of the top mistakes two or three mistakes to avoid based on what you've seen over the years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there are there are a few, right? Um, the, the big ones, the big ones, the kind of the heartbreaks, okay? Uh, inventors that finally come to us, right? And they're, they're telling, they're so excited about their invention. They want to get it patented. Uh, they've been, and they, and they tell me that they've been selling, that they've, you know, been publishing their invention. And I have to ask, how long have you been selling? Oh, just about a year and a half, two years. I'm like, oh, it's not eligible, right? Anything more than a year, if it's been published or sold for more than a year is not eligible for filing. And so it's a bit of a heartbreak when I hear that. So do not sell, do not publish your product, your service, if you think it's potentially patentable. Speak with a patent attorney first, right? That is number one, okay? Number two, I see this a lot where inventors will, you know, obviously they're, they're bootstrapping, they're trying to find the best way forward, but they will attempt to file their own application, okay? They're trying, to, they're trying their best and certainly you can do it, uh, but it is a shame when I sort of look at after the fact, you know, they're ready to file, let's say the non-provisional and they filed a provisional that's kind of half-baked and with just one particular embodiment or version and it's not gonna protect them. Right. And so what they've written is sort of, you know, what they thought was their invention, because that's what they're trying to sell. But really, their invention is way bigger than that one version that they're trying to sell. So that's, that's number two. Um, number three is skipping the search, skipping a search and just filing blindly. Uh, we are so big, big proponents of performing a really high quality uh, patent and publication search prior to filing. you got to look before you leap. And if you don't do that, you're kind of at the mercy of the examiner. They're going to find all sorts of stuff. 
And uh, unfortunately, you may have wasted a lot of money and time filing and waiting for your application. And worse yet, you might be entering the market with someone else having rights looking to sue you because you weren't aware of other patents that were already out there and enforceable. Very great advice. You know, uh, early on when I was talking with your colleagues and um, you and your correspondent said, don't go out there and start promoting this thing, you know, before you get it protected. It's really important. And you gave me the same kind of advice when we were talking. So I really appreciate that. Um, you know, on the flip side, what are some of the top success secrets that others can model from? Yeah, yeah, there are, there are quite a few. I mean, um, I'd say the, the number one is, is kind of understanding a, a plan, creating a real business plan. You know, that sounds simple, kind of contrite, but the, it's true that if you have a, a thoughtful approach into how you're planning to make money and you, you use that and, and know that patents is just a part of it, then you're, you're likely to be more successful. What I mean by that is really understanding, are you looking to grow and start a company or are you looking to potentially just license or sell your invention? They're two very separate paths. And if you have clarity on which path and you start to formulate the professionals and the network and honestly, the, the backing, the financial side as well to get toward that goal, you'll be, able to be a lot more wise as to how to utilize that patent asset to your advantage. So uh, having a business plan is by far you know, the best. And, and oftentimes, it's sort, of, it's sort of tip number two is the inventor, <clears throat> isn't always the best CEO, right? Not always the best business mind, okay? And it's okay to be honest with yourself and it's important to know when you might need help to when if your mind is so, you know, beautiful and, and you know, and in other words, you know, so focused on solving that technical hurdle, uh, but speaking with others, networking, uh, marketing and sales, if that doesn't energize you, you need help because that piece is what will end up becoming you know, integral to you becoming an entrepreneur, or you know, having a business an enterprise that's successful. So bring on a co-founder, bring on a partner, a business partner that'll help you actually be able to, to see the fruits of your labor um, and avoid the, tra you know, the unfortunate issues of you know, so many patents that are just you know, getting issued and that they don't make any money. So those are sort of the, the big tips I have. Um, and you know, obviously our firm, one of the ways we, we help our inventors with this is at each major step, you know, at specifically at the patent pending phase, we take, you know, take account, right? Where do you need help? What is your plan? How can we help introduce people that we have in our circle to you, um, help you? You know, because there is a whole host of things that need to happen above and beyond just acquiring the patent itself. Very good. Great advice. Um, you know, so I'm all about referrals and networking. I think it's extremely important. It's been so important throughout my career. Um, what are some of the ways that we can support you? How can we support you? You bet. I mean, we have, um, we have a, uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, Bold Patents, uh, YouTube on, on Bold Patents on YouTube as well. Um, I, I'm always looking for, you know, wanting to dial in on what people want to hear about. What are the questions that people have? Um, and so I've, what I've done is I've got a, a weekly Facebook Live that I run every Wednesday 9 a.m. Pacific and 12 noon on the East Coast. If anybody listening here today or watching the show uh, could obviously join if you're interested in more, but if, if you know someone or think of someone who may be interested, go to our Facebook page and just know that you can hop on that live and just ask questions because th that is the best, right? Inventors, business owners that are pushing limits, making a difference. Um, I, I want to know what you need, what, what information you want to have. I'm, I'm huge on content marketing. so. Building a tribe on our on our social pages is, I think, the would be a, the best way for, for for you guys to help me. Very good. You know, it's it's not something you learn in high school or college, like <laughs> how to get a patent, what to do, not to do. None of that right. is covered. You just kind of have to figure it out as you go. And I really appreciate the advice you've given me as I was plotting my way through to, to get a patent <laughs> pending status. So it was extremely helpful for for, for me. Um, so, Good. So um, another question I have is, yeah. overall, what was your experience um, booking and coming onto the show? It was very nice. You know, you, and you, you did a wonderful job, you know, preparing me with, with some of those questions in advance and, you know, making me feel comfortable. Um, this show, you know, from what you're saying, is a pretty broad reach. And so, you know, I'm humbled to be able to be here with you. 
Um, I, I feel like, uh, you know, the calendaring, the appointment setting and all the, you know, before the meeting we hopped on made me feel really comfortable. So I think uh, it was very smooth. Appreciate that. You know, uh, we're yeah. very fortunate. Uh, we're reaching 18,000, over 18,000 people per month with audio and video of the podcast. And that just keeps growing. And I'm very thankful for my colleagues uh, who are out there on social media and then of marketing, pushing it. Uh, I'm, you know, really thankful for how it's going. Um, Andy, can I ask you a quick question? Sure, absolutely. Would, would you mind sharing with me kind of your, your thoughts and feedback and working with, with our team and working with, with Reed so far on the patent process? Absolutely. It was really smooth. Um, you know, I felt like you gave great guidance along the way. Um, you know, it was easier than I thought it would be. It was a little bit, um, maybe a little bit more time involvement in making sure the documents were done well, but I get it. If you don't yep. have it broad enough and it doesn't cover specifics and it doesn't cover the outputs, your patent's worth nothing, really. So it's yep. important to get it right. But overall, the process was very smooth, very automated. Uh, I enjoyed it. Excellent. That's great to hear. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what would you say? as a final word of advice in this whole area of patents and business and entrepreneurship, you know, what, what's a final word of advice you'd give to others? Well, I mean, I would just say, um, I actually wrote a book on this. I'll do a very quick pitch, Andy. <laughs> Trust me, I won't. But I wrote this book, it's called You're Not Alone, okay? And uh -huh. I truly believe that. And I've got it, it's available on Amazon. You look it up. Don't forget, right? As an entrepreneur, someone who's doing something out there, you're hanging it all out on the line, it can be lonely, right? Sometimes even your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, you know, they can't quite relate. They don't know what it's like and certainly your employees, right? But know that you've got professionals. You've got people that are in there that are also business owners. And so one of the most powerful ways I've found to move myself forward is finding other business owners and, and forming a mastermind. You know, I have a group of five um, owners of law firms that we meet once a month and we just check in and we say, okay, well, how are you moving your practice forward? What is going on? How are you hiring? How are you firing? How are you, what are you doing to raise more profitability? Those are powerful meetings, right? You're not competing. You're sharing some of the secrets, some of the, the things that really make a difference on the big levers. So I'd encourage you to find other leaders, other owners of companies that are similar in position to what you're doing to move forward and always work toward building up those relationships and associations. Very good. Totally agree. You know, I've been lucky enough to work on over 20 different technology integrations with partners and market and sell combined solutions that bring more to the market. And um, it's, it's amazing what can happen with your own company and with theirs as well, you know, but yeah. I, I believe in partnering. I really do. I think it's extremely important and I uh, totally believe in that advice. So, well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Trucking Tower Podcast, Expert Insights. Thanks again for coming on with me, JD. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having me on. You bet.